How are you going? Welcome back to Gordy's Gas Bags, episode six. My goodness, we've got through five already and we're still here. Uh, of course, Corona in the background, you all know why that's there. Uh, absolutely thrilled. Quite a few people have been messaging me and saying, get this lady on. Well, we hooked up eventually. She does claim to be not the best IT person going around, but we eventually got our Zoom meeting going. Nicole Cusack! Hey, Gordy. How are you going? Good. Oh, my dogs are just starting to bark. What sort of dog is it? It's two. Oh, it always happens. As soon as something goes on, they just start. This is, what sort of dogs are they? Um, one's a, a Jack Shit, it's a, a Jack, Russell, Jack Russell Cross Shih Tzu, and the other one's a um, Poodle Cross Lhasa Atso. I, I think I've just found my new favourite sort of dog, a Jack Shit. <laughs> yeah, Jack Shit. And she is a Jack Shit. She's a <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because oh, it's probably the postie at the door. But anyway. oh, oh, right, they bark at everything. Yeah, well, there's every little bit of noise that happens now and they're just like, what's going on? Can we? Are we going out? You know, I like to go for their walks and that's what people are doing now. So. Yes, that's right. My dog's getting a walk five times a day. It's terrific. Yeah. Hey, um, so, Nick, thanks very much because I know you're not a big fan of doing interviews, so I feel mm-hmm. very blessed and privileged that you said yes. Um, mm-hmm. But that said, uh, you have a pretty significant story. Like, let's be blatantly honest, like... From from heyday right through to up there with Plum at the Aussie side and then on to the South African side, we've got a story to discuss here. Uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a journey. Yeah, yeah, it's a long one and, yeah, not one that I didn't I thought I would be taking, but, yeah, I'm here, still doing it. <laughs> yeah, which is great. So let's go back to the Powder Blue days, the New South Wales netball days. Um, a nice little cohort of mates you came through there with, but... In particular, one that stands out for me, Susie Kenny. Yep. Yeah. What a good still mate. Good friends. Yeah. Bridesmaids. Um, yeah, still really good friends and keeping contact. I only spoke to her the other day. So, yeah, still keeping in good contact with each other. Oh, uh, And she's going well, is she? Yeah, yeah, she's well. I mean, obviously, in these times, it's tough. But, um, yeah, she's still kicking along. Well, she was over here not long ago. Her daughter is playing water polo and whatever else she's playing. And she was over here, so I caught up with her then. And, yeah, she's going well. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Now, Nick, who taught you to shoot? Who who perfected your shooting style? Um, well, it was a gradual change for me. But the, the big change was um, Mark Caldo. Um, mm-hmm big influence on my career especially as a shooter um when we all first went to the AIS um we had to practice outdoors in Canberra and um we all had to shoot exactly the same not that we all looked the same because we're all different body shapes and types and but we all Mark had us out there and watching every shot we shot every session um and made sure we did it right and you know you're changing it you think why am I changing? I was getting them in before. Now I'm missing all the time. <laughs> um, you know, but obviously it paid off. Um, she had some of the pretty pretty good shooters um, in the Australian team at the time. So, yeah, it's quite successful. But Mark Caddo was probably the biggest influence in that and, area. And, you know, like when, when you look back through footage and, and you see anything uh, – when you're playing and, and, and you can even hear the commentators actually like the height of your shot I mean I get the style but you had your significance was just the arc of your shot I mean it was extra it went to the roof and then came back down again yeah I remember Ann Sargent once saying it's come back down with snow on it or something <laughs> um so was that high yeah I don't know I don't know why um I, I remember shooting I'm um, like at home um having like mum sticking a broom up in front of me while I was shooting. So, you know, I have to shoot up over the broom. So, I mean, it's a big part of getting up over the defender's arms and but not being the tallest of the shooters in the circle. Um, I had to, I suppose, but, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. No, I, do, I mean, I, I think it's great and I think, I think a lot of players should model their shot off your style 
specifically because I think, you know, like as you say, being able to get up over the height of some of the defenders' arms nowadays, if you have a look at Suncorp Super Netball, I mean, you know, getting up over an Emily Mannix or a Shamira Sterling, not an easy task. So, no. you know, that sort of style would be perfect. Yeah, and that's one thing when I do teach now, I mean, I'm not one for it, you must shoot this way. I'm not like Mark Aldo, you must yeah. shoot this way, um, even though it worked for me. But um, I, I, I would just change little things about people's shots sometimes and that is the first thing that I would do is get their release up a lot higher. Um, yeah. yeah, that's definitely one thing I, I would push on to every shooter, no matter yeah. how they shoot. 100%. Um, I'm not going in order here because as you've just said that, something's just popped into my head. This is how Gordy's gas bags work. Um, how do you go coaching Lenise Potgita? Oh, well, you don't touch that. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's some shooters out there that you just don't go near. Like she's so accurate the way she shoots. Um, <laughs> why, why would you change it? And it's just so unusual. I, I, I just still get amazed. I just watch and I watch how she's got a thumb in this position. I'm like, how do you shoot that way? But, you know, it works for her. And there are times where I would tell her to get it up and over. Um, so it's, it's only sometimes when their shooting technique changes from what works for them. Yeah. If it starts to change, you would kind of come in and just help her out a bit or she's asking for help. But yeah, yeah, I, it is. It's a unique style to watch, commentate, coach. I imagine. I'm looking forward. Hopefully, we get our season back on track this oh, year. I'm really looking forward yeah. to seeing uh, maybe some more court time for for Lenise and what she can do down at the Adelaide Thunderbirds. I think she can yeah. be a real force for them. Yeah, definitely. She um so much potential, and with a bit more confidence behind her. Um, you know, she's ready. She's ready for this now. And um, I think she will do really well this year. Yep. Yeah, cool. Hey, listen, um, uh, episode three, I got to catch up with one of your good mates, Mona, Simone McInnes. Yes, I did and have a sneak peek at that. Yeah, well, you, you would have then seen that she uh, dropped the old Moles Netball Club uh, yep. into the discussion. I believe you are a member of that club. I am one of the originating members. Um, <laughs> it kind of started up here, like um, Tweed Netball Association, they run a, a carnival, the McCock that Carnival and just a club carnival. And my husband, Tony, decided, why don't you get all the girls together and we'll do a demonstration match? I'm like, no one's going to want to play. We don't want to play, but we might get together. So, yeah, we coaxed them all up here and, um, yeah, we stayed at, on Coolangatta Beach up at a penthouse and... Just laughed and laughed and the first night we're up till two o'clock in the morning chatting and laughing. Oh, no, I might have even been later. But then by the last night we're all like in bed early because <laughs> we're just so worn out from just laughing and talking. Didn't go anywhere, didn't do anything, just caught up. It's hilarious. Yeah, uh, and isn't it one of the great things that comes out of uh, our sport itself, isn't it? Just a phenomenal friendship with so many. Excuse me for a second, let me just decline that. <laughs> One moment. It's probably Centrelink ringing me that I uh, am due for my uh, fortnightly job payment. <laughs> I actually think it was them, so now they're going to have to wait. Or oh, I'm you should have answered it. <laughs> oh, could you imagine how long we'd be doing this show for? Oh, and yeah. You just mentioned your, your beautiful husband, Tony. I specifically wore my Italiano cap oh, or hat yeah. today uh, yes. in, at four time. Uh, a very good chef he is, isn't he? He can cook a mean pasta. Yeah, or his mum can, yeah. <laughs> That's like his mum cooks, he thinks he can. His sister's a doctor, he thinks he can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm looking, uh, I'm looking yeah. like I've just come from Bali today, like very tan. You're very tan. I feel very white. I've got the sun, the, air, yeah. the light coming yeah. in on me. Sorry about that, everyone. Sorry, we digress. Um, I, I do love your husband. He had a very good friendship with my father. So did you, actually. You were my dad. Yeah, and he, he played a big part in me um, when I moved to Melbourne to play. Yeah. Um, yeah, had a lot to do with your dad. I was yeah. actually thinking yeah. of him when you, when you contacted me in one of the interview, I thought I remembered him, yeah. Yeah, birdie boy. Good on you, birdie boy, <laughs> resting up there, watching me doing all this stupid stuff. Um, <laughs> right, let, let's talk about... Firstly, playing for Australia. So um, for you, you, you talk about Marg in terms of your, your technique of your shot, but who, who had a major impact 
I guess, on you throughout your journey coaching-wise? Um, I mean, I, I think back for when I was probably under eights or something even, you know, and my old coach... Let me guess, let me guess, let me guess. Carol Sykes? No, oh. under eight. No. <laughs> no, when I was eight. No, no, no. But Carol Sykes, when all of my coaches had a big influence on me in all, for all different reasons, like Carol was just a great coach and getting everybody together, make every part of the team. And we were a really big family and the closeness of all that. And lots of stories with Carol, which, I mean, if you do, Keely, I'm sure she'll fill you in on a lot of those. Yeah. Um, but just... All the coaches that I've had have just had an impact on me in different ways. And um, the biggest growth, though, for me would have been at the AIS with Wilma Gay and Marg. Um, but there, that was a big jump up for me and it just, just shows you where you can go with netball and what, what I could have done. So, yeah. Well, you're talking, about, you're talking about Wilma Shakespeare for some people out there that may, may not know and, and what a formidable uh, coach she was. I also privileged to have Will uh, at the AIS. So we shout out to Wilma out there. Um, when, when you travelled with the Aussie side, um, who, who was someone that you um, got up to mischief with? <laughs> I never got up to any mischief, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> I was just around some of the naughty ones. <laughs> 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 oh come on! Um, oh, you know we had our little gang, I suppose. There was like you know, Carissa, um, oh Keely was always in there. Um, Simone, <laughs> Shelley, Sue. Um, oh, that's funny. Yeah, so there's always but, a few. And yeah. is there anyone outside of that group that wanted to get in? Surely, oh, everyone Vicky. was Vicky knocking on the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, Vicky thought we were all probably. Stupid or silly or <laughs> grow up. <laughs> oh, that's funny. The yeah. princess, she would have been. She would have been practicing her shots at the post. I'm definitely. Yeah, I'm getting right. you on, Vicky. If you're watching, I'm coming for you, Vicky Wilson. <laughs> oh, how funny! Oh, but it, it yeah. was a good time. And then, did you did you think I asked this question of Simone? Um, and I'll ask the same of you because obviously both of you have gone into the ranks of coaching in in different ways, shapes, and form. Did you see that as part of, you know, were you, were you coming out of netball and thinking, hmm, I might uh, go down that path? No, I came out of netball thinking I don't want anything to do with netball. <laughs> I don't have enough. You know, by the end of it, you're just, you're just over it and, you know, it's time to retire and you just think, no, I don't even want to watch netball. Yeah. I just didn't want anything to do with it. And then I, obviously I got married and popped out three kids pretty quickly. So, um but after my first child, I had had a call from Julie Fitzgerald who asked me to come in and work with the Swifts. And I'm like, hey, I'm a Ramwick girl, Swiss and Ram and Ramwick, like, you know, sitting there. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm not. Yeah. But I did. I went. And, and I just I started off just doing once a fortnight. I'm working with, um, who, was, who was in the team at the time? Um, uh, Megan Anderson was in the team. Um, yeah. Jane Oshwager, I think. And... And uh, that's Sloan with the shooters. So it was it was a pretty good little team and um we ended up winning the I think I've c I'm not very good with years, my memory's not very good. I'm not like Norma rattling off the names of the years. <laughs> no idea. Um but we ended up winning the, the Commonwealth Bank or whatever it was at the time and um yeah, and I just kind of slowly got into it that way. So I blame Julie Fitzgerald for me coaching. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it was an interesting move, wasn't it? Because it kind of grooved you all the way up. Let's talk about the Plum stuff. Um, <clears throat> to your journey with Plum, um, and not just with the Diamonds, but then the shift across to South Africa. I imagine, and I'm, I don't know this story, but I imagine when Plum got hit up by Netball SA, your phone rang immediately. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it, and it, it was because um, Norma and I, we I mean, to start with, like, I was working with Simone at the AIS, as you know, you were there too. I was the yeah. uh, apprentice coach or whatever yeah. I was doing, scholarship <laughs> coach. And, <laughs> excuse me. And um, she, every time I go to the AIS, she goes, oh, I'll have to get you in and, and work with the Aussie girls. I have to get you in. Never did. Never got yeah. me in. But I don't know, for some reason, one day, years later, she got me in and then, then I have never left, I suppose. Um, but in that, she 
she got the call from South Africa, and and at the time I was I was down in Melbourne, and t- my husband Tony, his um, dad was very sick; he had cancer and was in the process of passing away. And and she's and I just I just want to ask you if you want if, if I do it, will you do it with me? And I'm like, oh, oh, I really don't know what I'm doing at the moment, Norma. You know, I'm just going through this tragedy, and I mm. oh, would well, just let me know. Like, <laughs> It was really like, yeah, if you, don't, if, you, know, if you can't do it, it's okay, I'll find someone else, you know. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Um, but, um, yeah, so in the end it worked out. I, could, I, I was able to do it and, yeah, so we did it. Yeah. And what an extraordinary job you both did. Yeah, it was great. It's one of the, I mean, it's it's not easy. Um and coming from the like where we were with the Australian team, where you got everything at your fingertips, and you know you had every resource you, you can get, and no questions asked, and you go over to there where there's so much talent, so mm. much talent, and and but just they just don't have what we've got. Obviously, we're number one in the world, and they weren't at the time, and you know they're still um, developing in that aspect of their their professionalism of the sport, and. And that's a big area where, where Norma and I did have an impact as well, um, trying to lift uh, their standard over there of their competitions and things like that, So, which they're still working on. And they, they know what they've got to do. It's just a matter now of getting funds and doing it. But these girls were great. Yeah. You know, and I came in, Norma got me in, and I, I met them in New Zealand just before the World Champs in 2015 in Sydney. And I'm like, I don't even know these girls' names. I don't even know who they are. She sent me this thing with a picture, a little, you know, the little head and shoulder picture yeah. and, and their names. And I'm like, I, don't, I can't even pronounce their names. I don't even know who. And then I was a bit nervous going in. and But they were beautiful girls, lovely, you know, and just wanted to learn, had so much, yeah, talent. For those of the South African girls I've spoken directly with or when you see any of their social media, um, there is no two ways about it. They... Uh, are hugely grateful to you and Plum for what you did. There's, I've, I've never seen such a smothering of love um, f- from that era or from this current group of South African players um, for what you guys were able to to do for them. Yeah, um, and they always um, conveyed that to us as well. Um, and even still now, you know, you get emails from them, so, you know, especially when we left thanking us and yeah. and um yeah but they were very very grateful um and they yeah they, they they were just really a nice bunch of girls um and to see like norma come from with the australian team how you know strong and yeah. how she yeah. is i mean everybody knows how norma is and you get a lot of people you're you're either lover or hater but you respect her she has got that respect of every player and but to see her go from that coaching the Australian team to coaching these young South Africans, I'm like, who is this lady? Yeah. She softened up big time, you know. But she knew, she knows the players. She knows who she's got to work with and where they're at. And she's not going to come down hard on them if they're just not ready for it yet. So yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I think I, I can't wait to chat with Plum. It'll be, it'll be one of the questions I asked her. I think you know, how do you weigh up? coaching Australia versus South Africa because I think the two experience would be vastly different and her probably her the wrapping of her her incredible journey you know to finish on yeah. something so, so brilliant and exciting hey so what does that mean for you now in the world of coaching um just sitting back having a bit of a rest <laughs> waiting for the, are you waiting for the phone to ring hey, waiting for the next call hey it could be Centrelink you don't know <laughs> <laughs> Well, it might be that too. Um, I'm just doing um, bits and pieces. I've got my own little business, but I'm, I pick and choose what I do. Um, uh, yeah, do work at a couple of schools here in New South Wales, North Coast Academy, work as mentor coach there. So I do bits and pieces and I just do kind of what I want to do now And because um, I work in our, our business that we've got here and, yep. and sometimes it's nice just to have a normal life without the netball and I think that you need that break sometimes. Yeah. I do. Anyway, yeah. Hey, here, here. I mean, well, I'm missing the netball, but I'm enjoying a little bit of time at home and not hopping on yeah. an airplane every two seconds of my life. Um, so uh, a couple of questions before we finish off with the best part of the show. Uh, question number one, <laughs> which I know you can't wait for. Your best uh, part. Who will be announced as the next Australian coach, Nicole Cusack? 
Oh, well, I have a fav. I have a favourite, but whether it happens or not, whether she wants to go into it or not, Simone, of course. Yeah. So you reckon, you reckon she's up for it? Uh, I, yeah. I mean, it just depends on her what, where she wants to be. She's like the Vixens team, she loves and she loves that that job. Um, whether she's willing to fit the Australian stuff in around it or not, who yeah. knows? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, but I'd like to. But I think she should. I'm, I'm pushing it too. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We'll keep, keep at it. I think she'll be a great candidate. Uh, yeah, I think so. And I think there's a couple out there. I've got a couple out there that I think could have a red hot crack, but I think Simone uh, will be a good one. Uh, second question, and I've asked everyone this, uh, how are you and your family managing the COVID-19 experience? I know you're on the border at Tweed Heads, so you were talking to me prior to us recording uh, around having to get a pass. Talk me through it. Yeah, we're on we're on lockdown here. Like so, Queensland is you cannot get over the border. There's they've blocked off roads. There's probably only three main roads that go through to Queensland, and um, our business is on Queensland side. The kids went go to school on Queensland side. Our doctors there. We cross the border like five times a day. You know, um, so we have to get a we got a permit or a pass to. Um, let us through um, and so you slow down through that there's police SES whatever armies that were here the other day as well um, to check your pass we have to stick it up on the window um, if you have a New South Wales number plate I'll actually pull you over and ask and why are you crossing um, yeah so it's pretty it's pretty surreal like to have all that every day and just to go across to the grocery store or or any of your doctors, or anything, you know, it's um, it's a bit crazy. So, yeah. yeah, I can't even imagine it, Nick. It's it's um, mm. I'm I'm nervous about, and I'll say this right now to everyone out there. I'm very nervous about this coming Easter weekend. I just hope all Australians do the right thing because um, I feel like we're on track to in terms of where the government wants us to be. But I get nervous about the fact that. People may just push the boundaries this weekend because it's Easter and they think they can. And then all our numbers spike again and it pushes out our end game. And so that's just a shout out to all netball people out there watching this. Please do the right thing this Easter weekend. Stay at home and, you know, hang out, I don't know, around the house and do what you've got to do. Hey, Nick. Yeah, I saw not, um, just on that, um, I, as crossing the border and the, a few of the cars that got put it over to the side where it had... Victorian number plates on it. So they're, whether they're Victorians coming up for Easter or holidays or I, I don't know, but you still got people travelling around trying to get up to sunny Queensland. So you know, just I agree with what you're saying. Oh, bunker down, everyone. Like, <laughs> let's just get through this. I want to get back commentating. Netballers want to play. That's the most bloody yeah. important thing here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we don't leave without the most important <laughs> moment of the show. Uh, I need to, sure, like, to be blatantly honest with you, the Old Moles Netball Club are a bunch of experts. At <laughs> You've ha all had your moments. Uh, you must have a song that you enjoy. Well, I don't know. I thought about it because I, I saw your karaoke thing and I'm like, oh, just don't sing. I don't, when was the last time I did karaoke? I don't know. <laughs> Especially, you know, not on any drinks anyway. You just, um, anyway. So, well... Um, I had to think hard about it because all the only music I'm hearing at the moment is this rap music from my son and it's not appropriate. Um, so thinking back to the old days, I have come up with one. <laughs> I'm excited. It's the old days, okay. Is it the 80s? Is it the 80s? I don't know if it's the 80s. I don't know. Oh, I told you I've got a terrible memory and dates aren't my best. Um, maybe I should just start uh, and you can guess. And you can that's dementia. You can, sing you can sing along with me. Okay, let's go. All right. oh, I just get embarrassed. I can't sing. That's why. Oh. Uh, goes back to the old um, hanging out with Simone in Newtown days. Um, right. First I was afraid. I was petrified. Kept thinking I could never live without you by my side. But then I spent so many nights just thinking how you did me wrong and I grew strong and I learned how to get along and so you're back. <laughs> <laughs> just want to imagine without that look upon your face. I should have made you 
change the locks. I should have made you leave the key. If I'd have known for just one second, you'd be back to follow me on a go. Oh, you are a champion. I don't even know the words anymore. You've actually got a half decent voice. You'll go on if you want. With the microphone. <laughs> I uh, I can't wait to um, get Keely Devery on this because um, you're setting the standard. The old the old moles netball club. The standard has been set. So uh, yeah. Keely Devery, who's coming up, uh, I believe next week. Uh, the standard's been set for her. Good. Yeah, terrific. Yes. Job. Hey Nick. Gosh. That yep. was fun. Oh yeah, it was fun. Thank you. <laughs> what did you think it was going to be like? A, an, an operation. A grilling. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't grill. That's the hard questions. No, 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 no. It's not 60 minutes. It's just 60 or whatever long we've been going for. Anyhow, mate, yeah. I'm going to release you back to COVID lifestyle. Uh, Thank you. It's just, just great fun, isn't it? Um, yeah. And say a yeah. massive thanks to you. And I, I have no doubt we'll see you back around the ranks nailing that high shot for some of our players. But uh, congratulations on a terrific career and well done, uh, everything you've done with the Diamonds and South Africa. I've been really thrilled watching your journey, mate. So, Thank terrific you. stuff. Thanks, Gordy. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. See you later. Bye.